All right, today I'm going to work on the LJ a little bit. I got a CB radio set up that I'm going to install. I'm going to use a Terraflex mount on the driver's side tail light, like I do with all my Jeeps. Three foot fire stick, like I do with all my Jeeps. And a firing coax cable, because it's the best, like, low profile mount to use uh, for the tail light. I'm using a Cobra 75. This is the new version, the All Road. So it's got a bunch of new features. I had a Cobra 75 in my JK, my four-door JK, and really liked it. This is the new version. They even have a Jeep on the back of the box. So it's waterproof. Everything is in the hand, the handset, just like the original 75. It's got Bluetooth and AM, FM, and everything else. So apparently you can get a little headset for it too. So that's kind of cool. So I'll find a spot for this. I'll get the antenna bracket mounted and start running that coax cable. Okay, so here's the, the handset. It's a little bit bigger than I thought it would be, but that's okay. So here's the actual CB, and it's smaller than I thought it would be, so that's good. The power connector is cool. It's got a quick disconnect and an inline fuse, so that's good. Uh, kit to mount everything. And then I didn't I actually didn't know this when I ordered it. So this handset is a USB plug. And on the front of the uh the black box, the CB portion, there's a little knob right here. You turn the knob and you can take it off and there's a CB or a USB port right there on the front of it. So that's cool, but you don't have to use that. You can plug this directly into your car's USB port or you can use the adapter that they give you and plug it into your 12 volt outlet like that and not have it plugged directly into the black box at all so that's really cool so you could just plug this in like you know you could have this mounted somewhere way under your dash where you can't even see it and then just plug this into the 12 volt adapter as you needed the radio and then just like keep this in your glove box or in your center console or something so pretty slick I think I am going to mount this under the dash and I'll mount it in a position where I can have this plugged directly into it and I'll keep the CB visible or you know I'll have it mounted on the dash all the time but it's pretty cool some different options All right, so I'm going to run my antenna cable into this hole under the tail light. If you come down here under the Jeep behind the rear tire, pull this plastic piece out of the way. You can look up in there. That that hole is where the antenna is going to come in, or the cable is going to come in. And then I'm going to fish it up through that hole where that rubber grommet is. That'll bring it out inside of. Uh, the cab in the back and then I can follow that factory wire harness all the way up to the front of the Jeep. And this mount from Terraflex already has the paint ground off on one of the bolt holes up here and on the bottom of the antenna mounts so this will be grounded no problem. You do have to drill a fourth hole right here it's a little quarter inch bolt so I'm gonna have to drill the tub they didn't provide a bolt for whatever reason but I'll just throw a, a little quarter twenty bolt in there
Just a little quarter inch fine thread bolt. It's an inch long. I hope that's long enough. It should be. There's the bolt that I drilled, and then there's the grommet where I'm going to run that coax up from the bottom of the Jeep. Alright, so I used a razor blade and cut a slit in that grommet, and I'm going to shove a uh, coat hanger through the slit, just like that. So there's the coat hanger coming out of the grommet, it's coming down, and then I'm just going to tape my coax to it right here and then pull it back out. There we go. Okay, here's what I'm thinking. So there's a ton of room up under the dashboard on the driver's side. I think I'm just going to zip tie this up in there. Um, it doesn't weigh that much. It's just kind of bulky. It's a lot bigger than the original 75 uh, transmitter box. And then I think I'll have the handset connected to it directly like this. And I'll run it around here like this. And I'll hang it on this side of the dash like that. So it'll be out of the way. I don't. I thought about putting it over here, but it's kind of since it's so bulky, it's kind of like in the way of me putting the keys in the ignition. And I don't want it right here because then it's kind of from the driver's perspective, it's kind of in the way of the gauge. Or it's kind of in the way of the controls from the driver's side. But over here, it doesn't block anything from from my side, and the cable will be. You know, it'll be going straight under the dash like that, so it won't actually get in the way of anything. So, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to drill two holes in the center portion right here for the little hanger, and put this right here. So, round about right here. All right, here we go. Have to ruin my dashboard. Man, that drill's easy. back now. Actually going to try to bend that up a little. There we go. I like it. Glove box still opens. And not in the way of the shifter or the vents or anything. Alright. Okay, so I got the coax cable routed all the way to the front of the Jeep. I just followed the uh, factory wiring harness that's under here. You know, that goes all the way to that back corner. I got it coming out right here uh, next to the OBD, OBD2 port. But while I've still got some slack here, I'm going to go ahead and solder on the connector. 
not all cables are like this, but this one came this way. It makes it a lot easier to, uh, you know, fish this line through places. But it's not bad. Not bad to do. So that's all you got to do. Slide the connector pieces together like that. Now I got to solder that center pin in, which I will do now. I used to do a bunch of connectors, like commercial grade connectors for a, a cell phone equipment. I've probably done, geez, I don't even know, thousands of solder connectors like this. But you know, like carrier grade ones, ones that are a lot bigger. But it's been a long time since I was a field tech, so if they don't screw this up. So it's been a while. I only have this crappy soldering iron. All right, there we go. The little $3 Harbor Freight soldering iron strikes again. There it is. Clip that little bit of extra cable off on the center conductor piece. And thread the barrel back on. There it is. Cable's ready to go. All right, I got my Multimeter set up for continuity, and there should be none between the body and the center pin, which there is not, but it should be between the body and the barrel, which it does. So that's all correct. Yep. All right, cool. I'll check it at the antenna too, but I don't see it being a problem. Okay, that was not fun, but I got that box mounted under the dash. Actually zip tied it to the steel support for the steering column. And I got here's the power wire. Here's the power connector plug right here. There's the extra coax, so I'll just run it down the dash and then come back, make a big loop out of it. And I've already got the handset plugged in runs right there goes under and across and that plug is actually locked in so that uh, USB plug can't just pop out alright so I'm gonna run the power cable now this is right in front of the uh, or right below this main wire harness that goes into the Jeep kinda next to the brake booster there's this little grommet here I'm just gonna pull it out All right, got my power wire shoved through it. All right, got that right here. Okay, I'll zip tie that up out of the way. Alright, so the only thing left to do is to route the power cable around to the battery on the passenger side. I'm going to wrap it in this uh, cable loom just to make it look a little neater and protect it a little bit. Then I'm going to zip tie it to the factory wire harness up there. Alright, so i got my power wires ran all the way over here to the battery and they're zip tied really nice. Uh, I've crimped a couple of ring terminals on the end with some heat shrink. I had to extend these wires about, I don't know, 10 to 12 inches, something like that. But not a big deal. Get them bolted on here. Okay, that is hooked up. Let's go see if it works. All right, here we go. Okay. 
Looks like a... There it is. So that's pretty cool. I'll have to figure out how to use this thing and then maybe I'll do like a review of it too, but... CBWX volume squelch. Huh. Alright. Okay. It's working. All right, that's it. Uh, that's the only comms I'm going to do for this Jeep. I do have a, a, a handheld ham radio that I'll probably leave in the glove box, but that'll just be for emergencies. Every time I go wheeling, everybody, the most common communication radio is a CB, and it's the most affordable. I don't have to pay for permission to use it, all that kind of stuff. I've always had a CB in my Jeeps, and I probably always will. Next time I'm out in the desert and I've got some space around me, I'll tune it. Got an SWR. SWR meter here and I'll have uh, either myself or another Jeep will be out there or my, either myself with a friend or my other Jeep the YJ will be out there and I can test uh, you know reception and transmit and that sort of stuff make sure it's coming in clear but I'm not gonna do that today because we're in the middle of a heat wave and it is really really hot so next up will be stuff like body lift motor mount lift I have a belly up skid pan I want to put on it I still need to do like the valve cover gasket and the rear main seal and uh, transmission gasket and all that kind of stuff. So I'm waiting until I hit the next oil change and I'll do that. And then I'll start moving on to some big stuff. I got I've been I've started collecting some parts and it's gonna get pretty cool pretty quick. I think once I start digging into that.